I love hiking. One memorable hike I had was a summer hike in Big Bend National Park with my family. It was beautiful, but it was hot. I mean, West Texas desert, brutal. What if we had just decided to drink all of our water at the beginning, sort of prehydrate, if you will? Given that the soles were literally melting off of my boots that day, I can tell you it would have been disastrous. Thankfully, we were smart enough to ration our water, even if we weren't smart enough to stay out of the heat. This is basically the idea behind reserves in the mortgage world. Let's discuss. Howdy y'all, Randy Rogers, Mortgage Loan Advisor here. Today's topic is reserves. Reserves are simply fallback assets that a borrower has that can protect them if their income goes south. This can be in the form of cash and checking or savings or other funds like stocks, bonds, CDs, retirement accounts, etc. They're usually expressed in terms of months of mortgage payments. For example, if you have a $2,000 a month mortgage payment and are required to have three months reserves, that would be $6,000. For most standard mortgages with well-qualified applicants, reserves are not required. However, they may be necessary if you have blemishes on your credit, a minimal down payment, or other factors making the loan riskier. Reserves will be necessary if you're buying a second home, investment or multifamily property. Now, requirements may vary from lender to lender, so it never hurts to shop a bit. On a positive, ample reserves reduce risk to the lender, so you might qualify for a better rate. And even if reserves aren't required, it is very wise to have extra emergency funds anyway. If you're in the great state of Texas and in the market for a new home, investment property, or looking to refinance, I would be truly honored to work with you. You can contact me anytime at 83024-HOUSE. Please click that subscribe button and have a blessed day and a great Thanksgiving.